Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to this Advancing Financial Inclusion through Open Source Payment Model session. My name is Costa Tarek. I will be co-presenting co -presenting with Paula Hunter. Hi, Paula. Uh, I am, as I said, Costa Tarek, the Modulo Foundation Chair of the Board. I also am Deputy Director at the Bill and Melinda uh, Gates Foundation in the financial services for the poor strategy. So let's dive in. Let me ask you this question first. Um, do you know how people who are unbanked and who typically earn less than $2 on average per day live? So here is a symbol that represents their lives because basically they need to walk all day to pay for things. It is expensive to be poor because if you only have cash to deal for your transactions, then essentially you are required to work, to walk, um, to pay for uh, the tuition of your child at school, to pay for your utility bill, to uh, bring money to another family member in another village who needs the money. So you walk and you walk and you walk and you lose time, energy in just dealing with cash and uh, uh, having to deal all, all day with cash for your financial transactions. Today, there are still 1.7 billion people on the planet in this situation. Uh, 400 million uh, Africans on the African continent are in this situation. And uh, the, the situation also is skewed uh, with a big gender gap, there are more women in this case than there are men overall, from 60 to even 70 percent, so 10 to 20 percent uh, gender gap sometimes. So digital financial inclusion is essentially about connecting this, this population to an adequate digital financial system through their mobile phones, and uh, the instrument for that actually was invented 10 years ago already. The first innovation happened in Kenya 10 years ago, in fact, more than 10 years ago, um, with the system called M-Pesa. And uh, that system essentially allowed people to send money using very simple mobile phones, not smartphones, to, uh, to send money to each other pretty much in the same way they sent text messages. And this, um, this system uh, that was provided not by a bank, but by a telco company uh, has proven immensely useful for people in households uh, that, were, that are, were unbanked and then dealt only with cash. Uh, it is an instrument of poverty alleviation in the sense that when, when the people get connected to a financial system, they have a way to save money, they, have, they can better manage their money, they uh, can better manage their lives uh, uh, and not walk uh, all the time anymore. The other thing that uh, M-Pesa has proven is that it, is, it, can be, it can be profitable to actually serve this poor segment of the population with a totally different business model than traditional banks. So by 2018 then, uh, this is the situation. They, they were in excess of 150, uh, and today actually more than 200 mobile money operations across Africa. Uh, as well in uh, uh, South Asia. And you can see here some of the statistics, but it is, for example, impressive that 
in Kenya, 68% of adults, in fact, even more today, use mobile money uh, daily. Uh, and you can see some other impressive numbers showing again how digital uh, technology can serve in connecting and, and uh, increasing financial inclusion. So then, uh, so we are there uh, uh, today. As I mentioned, there are still 1.7 billion people. We came down at the beginning of the last decade from 2.5 billion people. So progress has been made, but uh, there is still a huge uh, population out there that we need to connect and the movement, we essentially need to accelerate the movement uh, considerably. So a new wave of innovation needs to happen. And that wave actually happened in, ha is happening in Tanzania. And in one word, it's about interoperability of these mobile money services. One of the issues with, uh, as good as I showed you, uh, the mobile money was uh, from many perspectives. One of the issues that remains is that the majority of the mobile money operations are siloed in the sense that the sender and receiver of the payment need to be on the same network. So if you think about this, if you had a phone uh, where you could talk to people on, only on the same network as you, would be useful, but obviously not uh, very pervasive. And so this next wave of interoperability happened in Tanzania when the four mobile money operations started interoperating. Um, and uh, uh, what, what is happening, so that was a few years ago. Today, uh, there is um, uh, a program that is driven by the, the Tanzanian Central Bank that will connect the whole country in an interoperable way, not only the mobile money operations, but uh, also uh, the traditional uh, banks. Uh, and, and hence, a woman, woman in Tanzania that, is, uh, uh, that has a mobile wallet on a mobile money operation now can resend and receive money between many, uh, across all of these mobile money networks, but also uh, from bank, she can receive salary from a bank account, she can pay other people who have a bank account. So let's look at uh, what actually does interoperability bring. Let me play this short video to show you what happened in Tanzania uh, uh, after a few years ago. So you can see how interoperability actually enables this scaling that is needed and that I was uh, talking about. And today, um, the, 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 there is a project on, on the scale of the whole country, not only on the mobile money operators to have interoperability in a payment platform on a country uh, scale. And Mojaloop, as we will see, is the technology uh, that enables this. Um, so interoperability, as I said, is the next wave of innovation uh, that will hopefully allow us to reduce the 1.7 billion people number, I hope to zero by the end of this decade, by connecting systems uh, together. And Mojaloop was actually developed as an open source, as a software that provides easily this interoperability between different systems, be it uh, mobile money operations, be it uh, 
even um, blockchain uh, systems. And uh, so Mo Moja Loop has been developed as one of the key assets that will enable this acceleration and hence accelerate financial inclusion. Before handing over to Paula, let me just tell you a little bit how these countrywide programs work. Uh, uh, today, Tanzania was a pioneer, as we say, but there are many other countries and regions in Africa and South Asia who have uh, uh, also progressed. Uh, and typically, there are these four layers uh, that require attention, rules, rails, accounts, and applications. Rules are, as the name says, everything that's required about setting up the right regulatory and governance framework, because uh, it is not because we deal and have services for the poor that there shouldn't be uh, rules and regulations. On the contrary, we should protect this population even more against fraud. Uh, for example, so very important aspect. Rails is the actual infrastructure. And this is a collaborative space where Moja Loop plays, where Moja Loop is an enabler to provide essentially a shared countrywide or even regional wide in payment infrastructure that has uh, the characteristics that Paula will talk about. Why is this important? It is important so that there is a rich ecosystem of accounts, be it mobile money wallets or traditional bank accounts, uh, thriving on these rails, but even more importantly, to connect new innovative applications to these rails that serve the population. For example, solar pay as you go, transportation services, all these services that require vast amounts of small value payments. So that's the stage that I wanted to set for uh, Mojeloop. And I, I will now hand over uh, to Paula, who can explain how Mojeloop enables this economy that is open, where everyone benefits from an economy that includes everyone. Paula, please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Costa. I'll switch over to my deck. Okay, so thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about the Mojaloop project and the Mojaloop Foundation and how we can address uh, the, the, the issue of financial inclusion that Costa has uh, given you some insights on. First of all, uh, as, Mo as Costa mentioned, Mojloop is an open source software stack. It's designed to enable interoperability across payment service providers. So this was a fundamental decision made in how we address financial inclusion is to leverage the benefits of the open source development model to deliver this functionality to the marketplace. The, the design of Mojaloop was based on financial inclusion principles uh, detailed by the Gates Foundation uh, to provide an open loop, open loop interoperability between providers, to have adherence to an international financial inclusion standards, to have a push payment model with immediate funds transferred and same day settlement, so no waiting for cash. Uh, adequate system-wide fraud and security protection. And as um, I'm sure you all can appreciate, collaborating on addressing fraud and security protection across a group of uh, participants is a more efficient way to address this than um, as a silo. We wanted efficient uh, propor proportional identity and uh, know your customer requirements. We wanted to uh, meet or exceed the benefits and um, uh, utility of cash uh, in these days of COVID. We can uh, certainly appreciate the fact that more and more countries around the globe are trying to reduce their use of cash. And of course, what we wanted to do is make sure that the platform was customizable so that folks could adjust the platform to meet their needs and, um, and their, both the regulatory and their, their local needs. 
And how are we doing this? Well, first of all, what we decided to do uh, earlier this year is launch the MojoLoop Foundation. Um, and this foundation, uh, similar to many of the organizations that you may be affiliated with, has a mission to deliver open source software to address uh, the financial inclusion uh, mission. Uh, we're doing this with a, with a mix of participants. We have the, the generosity of charitable organizations such as the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, uh, the Rockefeller Foundation, Omidyar Network, who are aligned with us on our mission and want to help support our efforts to, to uh, address this challenge. We also have technology providers such as Google, Coil, Modusbox, Ripple, Giori Digital, and Cybrin. These companies are, are very uh, well positioned in the payment space. They understand the challenges we're trying to address with respect to financial inclusion, and they're bringing engineering resources to bear to help us address this, this challenge. The Modular Foundation was formed um, this year, as I mentioned, but we've had a lot of history uh, since 2016 where we kicked off the project as an open source development effort. Uh, we've gone through three full phases of development over those years. We're now in phase four of development, wrapping that up this year, and we'll move into phase five. So uh, we have a pretty robust code base already in place, and in fact have several uh, deployments uh, underway. Uh, right now, one of those deployments is Moali, which is a joint venture between Orange and MTN, two very large mobile network operators in Africa. And they're collaborating to deliver uh, a MojoLoop-based uh, system to their customer base. Uh, and that has recently gone live and will continue to expand across the continent. We also have the Bank of Tanzania, which is uh, currently in development of a MojoLoop-based platform, uh, as Costa alluded to earlier in his slides. So we're, we're in a really good position now to leverage all that hard work our developers have put into this, the code base um, and, and start rolling out new deployments uh, around the world. I mean, we, we talk about Africa a lot, and it's an important sector for us because of the uh, proportion of, of uh, citizens that are unbanked, uh, but there's certainly uh, use for, for this platform all over the world. Um, even in, in my own country, the United States, there's still uh, a disparity in uh, financial services delivered to the poor and un unbanked. As far as how we uh, go about the development of MojoLoop, uh, what we've done is we, we certainly have a community-driven driven development process. Uh, that said, we, we ad adhere to an agile development model. Um, we are rapidly designing, building, configuring, testing, and rolling out new iterations uh, th three, four times a year. Um, our, our community meets four, four times a year for a week. Uh, in fact, the week of October 19th, they'll be, they'll be meeting um, uh, face, not face to face, I'm sorry, virtually. We used to hold them face to face, but as you know, we're all in the virtual world now. But at those meetings, um, what the community does is evaluate progress on work to date and establish priorities for the next program increment. Um, and then we just rinse, wash, repeat. Uh, this is a cycle that we're now, this is our 12th program increment starting the week of, of uh, October 19th. So the community is pretty well accustomed to our, a mode of operation and welcoming to others that wanna jump on board and, and contribute to the work streams. That community does vote on the work streams based on, on market requirements and gap analysis, and then that sets the priorities for the next program increment. That said, it's a very open process. It's inclusive of developers, implementers, and customers. Uh, we, we welcome all to those, those convenings. They're always open and free to, to anyone that wants to participate. Um, and uh, the agenda uh, spans from business issues to technical issues to market issues. Um, so it's, it's a very diverse set of people that are contributing to those uh, work stream discussions every, every 12 or 13 weeks. Uh, we entered phase four of our development cycle in January of this year. As I said, we're wrapping it up and um, we'll start phase five in January, 2021. So uh, we'd welcome you to hop on and, and join us in that effort. Uh, I'd be uh, remiss in not um, 
identifying some of the key technologies that are the underpinnings of the MojoLoop uh, offering. Uh, of course, it's a Linux-based solution, uh, but there are many other technologies that you're probably familiar with that are dependencies in rolling out a MojoLoop instance. Uh, so, uh, as you see noted here, uh, many of you are probably affiliated with some of these open source organizations, and we thank you for your ongoing support of those platforms that are so important to our work. The other thing about uh, the Mojo Loop that's important to note is that we have, um, we're hosting agnostic. Uh, we have an Amazon Web Services uh, platform that we're using for development. We have Azure instances that have been tested out. Uh, but what we're finding, particularly in developing countries, there is a need and an interest in uh, holding the, the, the uh, deployment close to home. There's regulatory issues, there's data privacy issues, and so we want to make sure that any option is open to, to the, the customers. They can use a cloud-based service or they can host it on premises themselves. Uh, there's a lot more detail about the technology, and for those of you that know me, it'd be dangerous for me to go too far into the architecture, but there is a lot of information on our GitHub repository about the architecture and all these technologies and how they how they play in, in the design of the system. So I'd encourage you to check that out uh, at the link uh, shared on the slide. For a little bit more about the community, um, as I mentioned, we've been operating now uh, as an open source project for nearly four years. Um, and what we've done is, over that time is developed a very strong base of participants uh, across all spectrums, you know, financial services, payment platforms, uh, central banks, regulators, and, and developers. Uh, and developers are obviously key to our code base, but having over 650 participants providing feedback, requirements, input, testing, et cetera, is really important. And we will continue to grow this, this community um, as the project evolves. It's, uh, the community spans six continents and 47 countries. So we have a very well-rounded voice uh, providing input into the project. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, we have uh, 10 members that have recently joined the foundation when we launched, providing operational and governance support uh, to, to the legal entity. What we really have set out to do is build an ecosystem that benefits everyone. Uh, fintechs and banks can use the code to modify their existing systems or to enhance uh, what they're, they're offer they have today as far as platform, uh, payments platforms. Uh, central banks can speed up deployment of national payment gateways with commercial partners. So a good example of that is like this is such as Bank of Tanzania has done. Uh, governments can use MojoLoop to, to deliver support payments to citizens right into their mobile wallets. Merchants can have customers pay their bills directly from their phones. And, and users, uh, to, to uh, Costa's point, don't necessarily have to walk miles anymore to uh, transfer money to friends and family members. It can be simply done via their, their mobile phone. Uh, so we, we, we're building out this robust ecosystem and again, welcoming all to participate in the ongoing development efforts um, as they progress. And while mobile wallets are an important factor here, um, and, and they've uh, really made cashless transactions easier, but they're often isolated from mainstream financial providers. Uh, so we had too many stovepipes. And what we wanted, wanted to do with MojoLoop is ensure that there was interoperability across all the different players in the, in the ecosystem to allow uh, a, a consumer to be able to use the, the tool of choice for them that makes sense with a relationship with a business or a bank or government um, as, as needed, but have the ability to exchange that money across very, various different providers. So that thus the interoperability is so key. So uh, how, how do we en enable interoperability in this payment platform? Uh, there's four key components to this. Um, first of all, there's an interoperability layer that connects bank accounts, mobile money wallets, and merchants in an open loop system. Emphasis open loop. That's, that's a, an important uh, shift for uh, payments, in, uh, particularly in, in the developing countries. 
Second, we provide a directory service layer that navigates the methods that providers use to identify accounts on each side of a transaction. Uh, so ensure that those accounts are, are validated and, um, and, and accurate. Third, we provide a transaction settlement layer that makes payments instant and irrevocable. The instant is so important. If, uh, if you're making $2 a day or living on $2 a day, you can't afford to be without that cash for several days. And that's, that's some, something that we wanna change. Um, and then what we have is components designed um, for implementing strong internal fraud controls. Uh, so the, the fraud and, and risk management is a very important point uh, for, for all financial institutions to, to navigate. And we wanted to make it a flexible approach so that they can refine their solution based on local and regulatory requirements. I, I want to stop for a moment and talk about the advantages of open source software to, uh, to, to the uh, masses in this room, so to speak, that are already indoctrinated. But I think it's important for us to recognize something that you all have adopted uh, for some time now and, and, and enjoyed the benefits of uh, in, in the projects that you've been working with. First of all, uh, with open source and the Mojulu platform, the capital cost up front is lower. Now, first of all, there's no licensing fee, but also we've made it easy for someone to test it out, download it, create a, an entire Mojuloop instance on a laptop, test it out, and then uh, move from there. So very low entry uh, barrier to entry and, and, and testing out the system. Lower maintenance costs, uh, because the 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 effort is shared across many organizations. One company does not have to pay for all the maintenance costs, doesn't have to hire all the developers to do the maintenance. The community will continue to maintain it. Uh, there's no vendor lock-in. Again, it, uh, it, when, you, when you deploy a system like this, it's in for the long haul. It's not, you don't swap out your payment platform every two years. And so what you wanna make sure is that uh, you don't have vendor lock-in. You're not at the, uh, whims of a, com of a commercial company that might say time to upgrade or time to add, to pay more for new features. Uh, you're, you're, you're free from that lock-in. And, and also there's a lower, lower cost to acquire additional functionality. I mean, let's face it, there's, you know, uh, is when you look at banking systems and financial systems, there's some rules and regulations that are, are unique to your country, but there are many others that are common across many different countries and regions. And when you have an issue with your system, uh, you come back to the community and the community might work on it and find that there's five or 10 or 15 other entities that are having the same issues and challenges. So that through that collaboration, the community can develop new functionality. And again, you're not opening the checkbook to pay for that. And the long range, uh, the benefits uh, from having this, this ecosystem are profound. Uh, first of all, uh, at the individual level, uh, it could reach well over a million and a half, a billion and a half individuals that currently are unbanked or underserved. Businesses not only can save money um, with this type of platform, but they also can open up new avenues for transactions and loans to small businesses and individuals. Digital financial service providers can also uh, see tremendous business benefit um, and also take some of the uh, costs associated with cash out of their, their operating expenses. And then governments can have a, a more efficient way to deliver uh, their benefits and payments to, to their citizens um, in, a, in a, a more transparent and uh, interoperable way. So how to engage. Um, there are a number of ways for folks to engage. Uh, if you're in the, the financial sector, if you're FinTech, if you're a central bank, uh, you can adopt uh, the Mojulu platform, uh, use it to extend your current offerings or to create new uh, lines of business or new offerings out into the marketplace. You can contribute code. Uh, we obviously are always looking for new community members to participate uh, in, in the Mojulu community. Uh, again, our, our convenings are open. 
And uh, if you go to our website, you'll see that there are easy ways to get onboarded into the community. We do have a community manager that will happily uh, talk to you and help you uh, walk through the, the, the code base and understand what the priorities are and how you can engage. And it's not just coding. Um, there's, there's testing that needs to be done. There's documentation that needs to be updated. Uh, there's evangelism uh, that needs to be done. So, you know, if you want to be an ambassador for the Mojo Loop Foundation, we'd be happy to have that contribution as well. And then finally, you can join the Mojo Loop Foundation. As I mentioned early on, we have a, a great mix of charitable and technology companies who support of mi our mission of addressing financial inclusion. Um, it, and so providing uh, resources to the community, uh, organizing events, providing them uh, with, with tools and a, a hosting platform for the development infrastructure. As you know, that all costs money. And so the, the Mojaloop Foundation exists to take away that friction for the developers. You know, in addition to being the the steward of the, the open source code and the trademarks, we also want to make sure that we make it as easy as possible for developers to participate in the community and contribute, contribute to it. So if you're interested in joining, I'd be happy to talk to you. Uh, so with that, I'd like to uh, encourage you to uh, to check out the Mojaloop uh, website. Uh, there is a, a direct links to all of our GitHub repository, so you can find out. You can go deep on the technical very quickly. There's also um, an opportunity for you to engage with us on the discourse platform. Uh, that's that first US URL um, uh, in the second section of the slide, the Mojaloop underscore OSS20. Uh, that takes you right to a discourse session uh, where you can ask questions about these, these slides, uh, meet our, our community manager, and talk about how you might be able to engage uh, with, with the Mojaloop Foundation. So with that, um, we would welcome your questions either now or uh, at the uh, uh, on discourse. Uh, happy to engage you and, and uh, thank you for your attention.